everybody and welcome to The Eclectic Knitter. Um, my name is Raylene and this is my podcast about knitting and spinning and sometimes I do cross stitch, most of the time I don't. <laughs> but, you know, it's kind of whatever I'm working on and crafting and stuff like that. Um, I'm sorry if the camera's a little bit shaky. Um, I'm trying out a spot in my room, on my bed, this is my headboard. You can see the walls, I, I'm in an unfinished basement. So this is the exterior wall. So it's been like covered in stuff. There's a window right up there. Um, but the my computer and my camera, which is attached to it, I use an LG webcam. It was rated one of the best webcams and it's like around a hundred bucks Canadian. So it wasn't a too bad of price. It has an included microphone too. So um, anyway. So my computer is sitting on the bed in front of me and I'm sitting cross-legged on the bed. Um, and the camera, of course, is sitting on top of my computer. It's attached there. So if I move too much, the computer and the camera will wiggle. If that happens a lot, I'm sorry, I'm trying. Um, but if this setup works okay and looks okay light-wise, I mean, I have like a natural light thing but I feel like it's like I can't look at the light bulb without my eyes going funny and I have it like actually mostly like almost turned horizontally away from me in front um the last time I recorded in the basement I was sitting at my makeup vanity and I noticed that because of the background was so dark that I was really bright um so I may maybe that's a little bit better because if I have it shining right on me, um, some of my projects don't show well, like some of my spinning and stuff, because the light just shows shine. It doesn't actually show the color. It doesn't want to focus on it. Um, so anyway, if this works, um, I can potentially record more regularly because it is currently 1136 PM central standard time and everybody else in the house is asleep. So I could probably get away with that. Um, I was going to record on Sunday and ended up taking a nap instead. So, you know. Um, anyway, I have a finished object. I was going to get my sock blockers out for this, but I forgot and do not feel like getting up again. So I have a finished pair of socks. These are out of um, Lavender Loon 80-20 blend, 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. Um, this is in the Hush colorway. Oh, I can already tell the leg isn't as long. Oh well. Is the foot as long in the second one? No, not really. Or maybe this is the, I don't know. Anyway. This is the Hush colorway. I have my screen darkened so that um, you can't see the reflection of my computer screen on my glasses like that. Um, but then I can't really tell how well the colors are coming up. Uh, that's actually pretty true to color. There's so much shadow on oh, there. That's good. So yeah, these are done. They're just 64 stitch um, vanilla socks. If I sit like that, then you can't see <laughs> the glare. Um, oh, I'm wearing my flax sweater by Tin Can Knits. This is out of Madeline Tosh Vintage in the Steam Age colorway, which is a discontinued colorway um, that I picked up many years ago. Um, so yeah, these are done. They're really nice. I really like this base. It's nice to work with. It is a two ply. Traditionally, I haven't been very fond of two plies, but I'm finding that I don't mind them just for plain vanilla socks. So that's that. I actually finished those like five minutes ago. I didn't think I was going to have any finished objects and it's been a while um, because I've been finding myself kind of blocked. Like I have a knitting block. <laughs> Um, 
So I have all these projects that I really, really want to do, but I'm starting to feel really guilty about some of the projects that I've had on the needles for, you know, six or eight months, which should have been done by now um, because I haven't been working on them. So I didn't want to cast anything on until some of the old stuff was done. And then I got trapped into basically knitting killing time because I started working on uh, my two blanket projects that I have right now, which means that I was putting a lot of work into projects that won't be done for like a really long time instead of working on the projects that I actually want to get done. Uh, anyway, but I did make some progress. So in my fat squirrel fiber canning vegetable bag, which I love because I love canning, is my leaves of grass shawl. This shawl is a pattern by Jared Flood. It was in a Brooklyn Tweed issue, I believe in 2010, maybe late, maybe older. I don't have Ravelry open. Oh, now moving my mouse to makes the camera jiggle. Okay. I'm going to do this as smoothly as I can. Excuse my nose running. Um, it was in the Loft collection in November 2011. So that's fine. Um, I started this project November 1st of 2017. Um, I recently picked it back up again, like this month. Um, so I am done the middle. Oh, okay. So I'm done all of the middle charts. And I mean, it looks like a giant hairnet basically right now. Um, I have switched it to 32 inch needles. I just realized that I had still had it on 24s. And I have done six repeats of the edging chart out of 71. <laughs> I'm not even one seventh of the way there. So I sit down and I, I did like one repeat the first day I started doing the edging. And then the other day I picked it up and I did like three and a half repeats. I did like from here all the way to here. And it really, the repeats don't take very long because it's only like a couple stitches total. Um, and I am really liking it. It's just, um, I can't really work on it during the day because my three-year-old niece wants me to play with her and having, um, a project out like this where I need my iPad and a chart and I need to pay attention. It just doesn't work. And then in the evenings I've been playing WoW or not been in the mood to work on something charted. So it's somewhat of a trouble um, figuring out when I can work on it. And this is out of Womiza Lace in a weird different blue. It's that's really not color accurate um even that isn't color accurate it's like a it looks like a denim blue the light's too bright this stuff is too shiny you never realize wool is so shiny until you have like a i wouldn't normally think of this as shiny but then you put it on camera and you're like shiny okay anyway it's 11.43, I'm a little loopy. So I have put some work into this. Um, and I have, this has kind of become my knitting spot. So I do bring up a project sometimes during the day um, or in the evenings and I sit in front of the TV on the couch and knit. Um, but I in the evenings after everyone else goes to bed, I sit on my bed. It's cold down here and damp, kind of. Found a big spider running on my blankets the other day. It got flung off and I don't know where it went. Don't really care. Um, as long as it's not in my yarn or on my bed. I'm fine. I'm fine with spiders. As long as I can't see them. <laughs> no, it's, um, 
And I told that story at dinner one time and I had to have a talk with my niece about how spiders are good for the environment and how they eat bugs, other bugs like mosquitoes and bugs that bite you. She was not convinced, <laughs> but she's three, so it's good to start that stuff now. Anyway, um, so yeah, I have like a bin. My bed is here, of course. There's a wall at the other side of my bed, so it's kind of tucked in a corner underneath a big window. Um, and then I have my makeup vanity here, which is also doubling as my um, bedside table kind of thing so my like my um i home clock is here where i charge my phone my ipad sits on here and then like the remote and the playstation remote and i have i i think i've shown these bins that i bought at walmart for like 10 bucks to store my whips on my old couch um when i was living in saskatoon and i now have that bin um, it's tucked underneath this side of my makeup vanity so I can just kind of pull it out and grab whatever project bag I want without and then they're kind of contained and organized because I don't have a lot of room and most of my stuff is either in storage or at my parents so anyway the next project that I worked on also in a everything's a fat squirrel fiber bag they're the only bags I've ever really bought in bulk almost i didn't buy them all at one update but they're the bags that i have bought the most consistently i will say so practically all of my project bags are fat squirrel fibers at least all the project bags that i have here i do have a bird a bird leg bags bag and i have one other a little sock bag that i do enjoy i like them um and then i have one bags by granny they're sold by um leading men fiber arts it's a a chartreuse green gray and teal chevron pattern but that's padded like there's interfacing between the inner layer and the outer layer and it makes it feel too smushy for me i don't i don't know i don't like it these stand up on their own there is no interfacing though they're just made usually using um a designer like linen cotton blend or like their designer weight fabrics like for couches or curtains or whatever it's not just like quilting cotton um which is interesting because i think she finds prints that maybe not a lot of other bag makers find because or use because I think a lot of them just use quilting cotton so anyway and then it's like a unbleached linen lining anyway I'm not here to talk about bags or my bedroom setup really um, this is my Aquina scarf I apparently stopped in the middle of a row um, the last time I showed it, I was at the whale stitch marker right there. And that is how much work I have put onto it. I am at about 51 inches total, and I need to go to 72. So I have less than two feet left to knit. I have knit um, three and a half skeins of yarn into this, and this is. Um, Beaver Slide Dry Goods, 90% or 90-10 Merino Mohair, worsted weight, to two, worse, woolen spun two-ply, it's non-superwash. This is the Mountain Midnight colorway. And it is coming out a lot more kind of cobalty blue on camera because I think of the light, but it is like a dark, it's a really dark cobalt, almost navy, and it's got like the... It's got like some sections of a lighter blue and then it's got like this almost tweedy effect with like super dark purple bits and black almost and yeah it's really pretty i've knit a hat and mittens out of this before in the past last year um, and this is for the recipient of those mittens as well so i have broken into the fourth skein 
um, not too long ago, right there. And I do have a fifth skein as well it's sitting over there. I would need to, I haven't wound it yet, but I'm not sure I'll need it. I might, I probably will, um, but I just haven't wound it yet. So this is one of those projects. I started this in July of last year. This is one of those projects that I feel like I need to bust a move and get it done already. So it's stopping me from casting on anything else. And I feel like I shouldn't even cast on another pair of socks because that'll take my attention away from these things. But then I don't really want to work on these things. So then I'm at an impasse, right? I don't want to cast on anything new because I need to finish this and I don't want to knit on this so it never gets finished and I end up knitting nothing. That's the problem right now. Or at least it has been the problem right now. Um, the next thing that I have worked on. Oh, another fat squirrel fiber bag. It's with foxes. These are her Erin weight sweater bags, by the way. The last one I showed was just, um, I think it was just a sweater. This is an Erin sweater. So it's huge. And I have two of these. You will see both of them today. And they are both holding blankets. So this one, oh, it's crochet, but I'm still showing it in. Oh no, I'm unraveling. No, wow. Oh, okay. Right, I didn't finish a row. Where's my crochet hook? Hmm. I'm sure it's going to fall out onto my lap at some point while I'm manipulating this thing. Okay. Um, I believe last time I showed this, I was working on this. I was on this blue and yellow, these two row, three, two rows of blue and yellow right here. Um, when I picked this up, this is my granny stripe afghan. So I've knit one, like three or four rows ish, but I'm not sure when I last showed it. So this thing is wider than a king size bed. When my mom and I measured it after I had cast on almost 600 chained on, sorry, 600 chains, um, we measured it and it was 80 inches wide. And I am going to go until it is probably 90 inches long to make it a decent bed size. I only have a queen size bed. So I'm not quite sure what I'm doing, but I wanted it. The granny stripe afghan pattern, the one I'm following is from Attic 24, I believe. Um, pretty sure. Yeah, granny stripes by Lucy of Attic 24. This is the one, um, this is the one that um, stranded Oh, what's her name? Amy of Stranded Stranded Podcast and Stranded Yarn. Um, she used, but she's only done, I think, a twin size, and that's what the pattern originally is. It's also originally written for DK, but I'm using finger weight scraps. Um, and because I have a queen size bed, I wanted it bigger, wider than what most people have done for a granny stripe blanket. I was looking through projects that had used fingering weight yarn and most of them have done like a lap blanket. And I wanted something that I could possibly drape across my bed. So I just chained on. I didn't count how many I chained. I just chained until it was long and then did my foundation rows and then started it's a free pattern but i don't really remember what the foundation rows are <laughs> and then started doing my treble crochets or double crochets my mom calls them double crochets um the tutorial i used originally to make granny squares which is which i used for my 
granny, like my little granny square blanket that I showed a couple weeks ago. I finally wove in all the ends on that, but it still hasn't been washed or blocked. Um, that's like a lap size blanket. Um, called them treble crochets. And I think it's a, a term difference between British crochet terms and American crochet terms, but I'm not 100% on that. All I crochet is granny stripe and granny square stuff. <laughs> I don't do anything else. My mom crochets a lot. I do not. I knit. Mom does not knit. Anyway, so I put a couple more rows on that and because they're so freaking long rows, feels like I worked on it for days, which I guess I kind of did. So the next thing that I actually put some work into is my Cozy Memories blanket, which I'm doing all in Madeline Tosh, Tosh Light. I had, I was involved in a five gram skein swap um, number of years ago, five or six years ago, through the Madeline Tosh Lovers group on Ravelry. You basically break down one skein. They do usually three groups and you can choose to be in one group or all three. I was in all three. So you skein up your, you break down your skeins into each group should be in 25 gram mini skeins. You mail them to the person who's organizing them and she mails back 20 mini skeins per group of all kinds of different colors. Um, so I used that to start this off and I was running out and I wanted to make it bigger. And so I've started, I started randomly buying um, unicorn tails from Madeline Tosh, both from their store directly online. And there's been a couple of yarn stores I've gone to that have had unicorn tails for sale. So I've knit on, I think everything from here, here, this way. So it's hard to show this because it's so floppy. I'm, I know these two I didn't knit this time, but I can't remember the last time I showed this. So I've knit on one full row here and then I've done almost another full, well, I say full, but it's not really. And then another two squares on here. Um, so I started by making like a six by six block and then started branching out. Um, I am going to be, I measured the width of one of these blocks because I'm doing a 42 stitch block and I'm just doing regular decreases. I don't want a super defined center. I think Within the garter, this provides enough definition for me. I mean, you can see it on camera. You can see it in person. That's fine. Um, but, okay, I measured and then I know the width of a queen size bed. And I'm, I, if I want this to fit on a queen size bed, I have to do 17 across. And I've done 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 right now. And if I just want to do it lap blanket size, I would probably attach one or two more, but I have a feeling I will end up doing more. And as you can see, I have woven in the ends on most things, except for the ones that I've most recently knit, because otherwise you're left with two ends per block. And that just becomes overwhelming after a while. So yeah, I do enjoy knitting on this. It takes maybe 45 minutes to do a block. And I have, this is another, my other Fat Squirrel Fiber Erin bag. And I have, there's going to be some rustling. I have organized all of my minis and unicorn tails into color groups, kind of, using these gallon Ziploc bags. So these are my naturals, grays, browns, blacks etc. These are my multicolored unicorn tails, so some speckles and just some variegated. 
And then I have tools. Blue, green, purple. And then I have worms. Red, pink, orange, yellow. And then I have a bag of colors where I have all, this is like leftovers of unicorn tails where I've already knit one square in each of these colors. Um, but I will be probably knitting more squares of these colors because I still have yarn left over. Um, my goal, in theory, is to knit all of these into the blanket. So I think I have enough because uh, unicorn tails are 20 grams and I calculated the size of my squares based on a five gram um, mini skein. So I can get, in theory, four squares. Oh, I hadn't thought about that yet. I can get like four squares out of a unicorn tail, in theory. I have not tried. Um, but I have a lot. And I still do have some left from the mini skein swap. Um, and I have actually pulled out, like I have a lot of Tosh Merino Light full skeins. And I actually have some here. Most of my stash is at my parents. But I have some here that I actually pulled out a full skein put it on my Swift, wound off what I thought was be enough for one square, um, and then re-skeined it up, like took it, cut it, took it off my Swift and put it back with the tag on um, so that I can use, because that was kind of the thing. Originally, I would buy this stuff and then when I use it, I would have leftovers, but I'm not knitting much of my Madeline Tosh. TML uh, Tosh Merino Light right now. So I figured that was a quick way to kind of get different colors that I maybe don't have. Like the one that I took was, it was a one of a kind that I bought. They have one of a kind skeins of um, Tosh Merino Light up on their, up on the Madeline Tosh um, shop, MadelineTosh.com. Um, so they're mystery skeins. You order them, they're at a discount. It's usually $24 US for a full skein and they're discounted I think to $16.80 or something or maybe $18. Um, so I bought three and I got two blues and then a green speckle. The blues I think are speckled too or variegated kind of or shaded tonal. I don't know. Um, so the last project that I have worked on is a new one because I gave in. Uh, I am knitting this out of Oh, Barrett Wools, Wisconsin Woolen Spun in the Sport Weight. This is the Quaker Gray colorway. You can see right there. 360 yards per 100 grams. I think I have five skeins of this. I bought a kit. I don't have the kit with me. Most of it's over there. I just have Quaker Gray which is almost like a brownish kind of gray. I was a little bit surprised by that. And then they give you this little mini skein of birch, which is like their natural color. And it came with a pattern that I apparently already had in Making Magazine. Um, but this is the Branches and Buds Pullover by Carrie Bostick Hodge. This pattern was originally in Making Magazine number one, as I said. Well, as I, I said, making. I don't think I had said the number one. I have done half a repeat of the color work chart. Come on, focus a little bit better, please. It's rolling quite a bit, so. There we go. Um... And I'm trying to be really mindful of keeping my floats really long. I had watched, I watched a couple of back episodes, like episodes one to six or something, I think, of Skein Deer Knits. And in one of those episodes, she, because she does tons of color work. That's basically all she knits is color work. And it's beautiful. Um, I'm not... I haven't done a lot of color work. Like I have the Bedale hat, but I've only put like another half a repeat of the color work pattern into there. So I didn't bother pulling it out. Um, but 
she says that instead of she goes a lot of she says in one episode that a lot of people talk a lot about going up a needle size when they do color work uh, and she's like really that's not necessary what you should be doing or what what that will do is it'll loosen up your floats technically because the extra um looseness from going up a needle size will allow the floats to have a little bit more give in them because the stitches can tighten up a little bit more so i have this on a 24 inch needle right now and so i'm trying to be really mind she showed how she stretched out every once in a while pretty much every time after i do the birch which is like, like the contrast color i make sure that i pull this so that the stitches are nice and it is it seems a little bit warbly right now um but i think that's partly from the increases that are done right here after you do the half inch of ribbing and then this garter section um and i have a i right now i am praying on it blocking out I'm going to knit the whole sweater. I'm not going to bother taking it off the needles and washing it and laying it flat and seeing. I'm going to knit the whole thing. If it's a little bit warbly, I don't know how much I care. It's a top down. So, and I want to also make it longer than the pattern. So the pattern calls for it to be 11 and a half inches, I think, from the underarm. I want it to be more like 20. This sweater is 20 and it's like the perfect length for me. And I'm knitting the 61 and three quarter inch size. I did go down a needle size. I did a gauge swatch that I did not wash and block. So, um, and that was at, I think 20, 21 stitches per four inches. And I needed it to be 24 stitches per four inches. So I'm knitting the body of this on us threes. And the ribbing I did, oh no, was it on threes? Yeah, I, the, no, I'm doing the body on US fours, the ribbing on US threes. The gauge swatch was done on US fives. That's fours are a 3.5 millimeter, fives are 3.75 millimeter, I think, because sixes are 4.0 millimeter. And then a three is probably a. 3.25 or a 3 something like that so that I have started this is about one evening of work on this um, so yeah that's kind of coming along I still want to get that scarf done so tired of scarves which never end um, the next thing I brought out um, spinning that's all my knitting works in progress. So spinning. Um, I still have the two ounces of Hello Yarns in the Happy Happy Thank You colorway on Finn. It's still um, on the bobbin. I haven't spun the other half um, because I started spinning some Rologs from Fellview Fibers. These are the Skidosh Snows colorway. It's 100 grams. It's merino, mulberry, silk, rose fiber, and angelina. I do not know the percentage of each of these. This is the only information you get. And this is what... Here, I'll bring a fully rolled one. This is what they look like. So it's this really pretty white with gray fiber. And there's some gray wool in the middle of it as well. Um, sorry for the rustling. I'm keeping the ones I have not spun in the bag that it originally came in, which is like this. So I have spun, there were seven grow logs in the bag. So I did three and a half and then I'm doing the other three and a half on the second bobbin. And then I'm just going to two ply it. Um, so this is my first two ounces ish. Of the Skidaw Snow colorway. I've never spun 
this was the color that it was having a really hard time showing because there's so much sparkle Ooh. and um, there's so much sparkle and silk and the rose I can't tell okay I've never spun with sparkle I've never spun with silk I've never spun with rose fiber so I don't know what of this is the silk versus the rose fiber the sparkles fine it's just like little bits that are in the wool it's all this shiny stuff it's it's the rose fiber and the and the silk that are making it like super shiny and because of how they're done with the the shiny silk or rose fiber like wrapped on the outside of the roll log you get like sections where all you're spinning is like it feels like all you have is like the silk or rose fiber and it's really smooth and it's really shiny and it feels very nice and this feels incredibly soft um i was originally gonna i started this because i was going to spin it woolen because of the preparation and I have the um, plying or drafting from worsted to woolen um, craftsy class. And I was watching that with, I don't remember who did that class. JC Faulkner Boggs. Boggs Faulkner? Faulkner? Yeah, something like that. Um, so I was originally going to spin this woolen and I tried and then I got frustrated. So I'm just doing it worsted as usual. My usual... Um, short forward draw um, for drafting but I'm hoping to work on it because I have a lot of other roll logs that are very pretty that I would like to spin I want to be able to spin woolen um, so I'm going to work on that but right now I've only been spinning since like July of last year um, right now I find when I have tried um, I find that it doesn't have enough control for me so yeah um i have started the other two ounces of this the other half and i have spun one and a half i have two full roll logs left and then i will two ply it and i think it's going to be either a hat or like a cowl i'm thinking maybe one of those um cowl shawls that Oh, who does those? Like the Zuzu's Petals, that project. Um, I did one in a gradient, the Aurelia Cowl I did in a gradient. It was Mad Tosh Tiny Twists, which was a DK. It's Hillary Smith Callus. So she has a lot of these. They start off like a shawl and then you connect them in the round. Um... And she has some of these. They're really a cowl was a fingering. Oh no, it's a DK. And why are you suggesting all fingering? Like Tosh Merino Light? Malabrigo Sock? Anyway. She has other patterns that are similar to that. Um, that are done in like fingering ways with different stitch patterns. And I might do one of those in that finished yarn um but i'm not sure yet it's not even finished yarn yet maybe i won't like it once it's finished um i have a little bit of stash enhancement to show you if you're a member of the hello yarns fiber club and you um, have not looked at the spoiler thread and have not received your package yet um, you may want to look away because this is, I received this today in the mail. This is the February 2018 Falkland, um, four ounces. It's called Smolder and it's these beautiful, um, burnt oranges and browns and yellows with these shots of blue and some natural. It's really pretty. It's four ounces of Falkland. I don't know when that'll go on the wheel, but it will at some point. Um, so now that this has been almost 40 minutes, I'm going to uh, 
end it here. I hope you have another couple weeks. If you do have um, any comments about this setup specifically, um, I know the lighting is not ideal. I know it's maybe not the best to have the white background of the wall, but it is would technically be the most convenient for me because I would be able to record um, more often. I would be able to set up like a weekly um, schedule for when I record and post things a little bit more often because if I record upstairs with the elephant painting in the background then I have to wait for everybody to be gone from the house and that doesn't happen terribly often <laughs> so yeah um, I hope you guys are having a great week um, I forgot to say this at the beginning of the episode but you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Kamana Knits I will try to remember to put that in the down bar. Maybe I'll put it at the beginning since I forgot it this time. Um, you can find show notes for this episode at um, theeclecticknitter.com. Episodes are posted to YouTube. Um, I will not be uploading them to iTunes anymore. If anybody does watch it on iTunes and has a really big problem with that, let me know. This is going to be the last episode that I upload to iTunes. Um, so I hope you have a great couple weeks and I will talk to you later. Bye.